over the years, I've done several videos on packing motorcycles. In fact, it's kind of an interesting experience to go back and review those old videos that I did. You can really see uh, the progression, right? How I've changed over the years when I started doing this channel back in 2011 to where I am now. Now, of course, I have changed my packing style bags that I use and so forth over the time, right? You learn each time that you go out, you learn to carry less, and you learn different ways of packing that work better for you while you're out there traveling. This is especially true when I am camping, right? At that time, when I get into camp, I don't want to have to mess around with finding all of my camping gear in five different locations on the bike. I want one place where I can go to get my tent, my sleeping bag, my sleeping pad, my camp chair, and get it all set up with the least mess and fuss. And it took me a few tries to figure this out. When we were getting ready to go to Alaska back in 2017, we were doing some camping trips, myself and my buddies who went along with me. We were doing some trips, you know, just to work out the bugs and figure out how things were gonna work smoothly. And in doing so, I went through several different iterations of packing. At first, I was really concerned with getting the weight balanced and making sure that the weight was down low, and I ended up with camping gear and just about every bag that I had, plus there were three bags that were on top of my hard bags. So it ended up being very cumbersome for me on those first couple of camping trips. I would get into camp, and as I just mentioned, I would have to get into everything, unstrap it all, open all of the bags, find all the camping gear and my tools that I needed to set up camp. Again, it was a little bit of a, a stressful situation that I had created for myself. By the time we left to go to Alaska, I figured out that none of my camping gear would go in these big hard cases. All of the camping gear would stay up on top of the bike where it was easy to get to. So I had three bags. I had a small bag that was on top of each of my side, my panniers here. And then I had another bag that was sitting up on top of my, uh, my rack here. And in that way, it did make things a little bit easier that I could get to my camping equipment very quickly and easily, but I still had three bags to get in and out of. I was still unstrapping three bags, opening them up, finding all of the gear, and then putting it together, assembling it on the campsite. So after doing that on this trip to Alaska, I realized I needed to come up with something even more simple. So what I ended up going to was this one bag solution. I went out and I got myself a 60 liter dry bag. This is a dry bag from SW Motec and it holds all of my camping gear in one location. So now when I head into camp, I simply take this bag off and everything I need, that is my sleeping bag, my tent, my bedroll, everything is in here, including right, my hatchet that I use to pound in steaks. So everything I need is in one location. I don't have to get into anything else until after I've set up camp. Now I know looking at this bag, some of you are gonna think, man, that is way too heavy to be up on top of this bike. But it absolutely is not, right? This bag weighs 20 pounds. Again, the things that are in here are very light. I've got my tent and my sleeping pad, my sleeping bag, right? And my camp chair are the basic items that are in here. Again, the whole bag weighs 20 pounds. Secondly, as far as the weight goes, if you've ever ridden with a passenger, 20 pounds, 50 pounds, that's nothing. So having that up on the rear rack of my bike, again, is really no big deal. So when I get into camp, all I do is I unhook this bag, take it off, and get to work. So let's take a look in the bag and I'll show you what I'm talking about. In here I've got, again, my camp chair, which I can just take out and set aside. I've got my hatchet, again, for pounding in steaks. I've got my sleeping bag right here. And 
Then, of course, my tent. That is the first thing I'm gonna set up. And this big thing right here, well, that's my sleeping pad. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Another great thing about having a big bag like this is that after I'm done setting up camp, I can take all of my riding gear, right, including my coat, my pants, and even my helmet, stuff it in here, roll it all up, right, and it'll stay dry for me. Right, and then I can stash this bag under one of the vestibules and save myself a lot of room inside the tent. But lastly, let's talk about my sleeping gear because I know you guys saw uh, the pad and the sleeping bag in there and you probably went, oh my God, that's huge. And you're right, it is huge. I could go with a really light and thin sleeping bag and a light and thin you know, sleeping pad. And I have done that in the past to save myself space. And I also hurt every morning and I don't sleep very well. So I decided if I'm going to continue camping, which I want to do because I do enjoy it. I enjoy being with my friends, hanging around the fire. I enjoy being outdoors. So if I want to continue doing that and enjoying those things, then I need to come up with a way that I am gonna be comfortable and I can get a good night's sleep while I am in my tent. And again, going with thin pads and little light sleeping mummy bags and so forth just wasn't hacking it for me. So with this big bag that I carry, I can carry larger, more comfortable equipment. So what we've got here is an X-Ped Mega Mat, right, underneath here. And then on top of it, we have a Sierra Designs Front Country Bed. And this is a zipperless sleeping bag. It is square, as you can see, extremely wide and extremely long. The mat is 26 inches wide by 72 inches long, and it is easily accommodated by this sleeping bag. The sleeping bag, instead of a zipper, has this quilt, this tongue, that you can grab and wrap around you, and it works extremely well to keep me comfortable and warm under most circumstances. I can stay in the sleeping bag down, you know, into the lower 40s, maybe even the upper 30s without having to add any additional insulation. However, I have been in this bag when it was 25 degrees out and I did have to add an additional quilt. What I did, I just slipped the quilt inside the sleeping bag, wrap it around me along with the bag and that really works well so I can go down into lower temperatures. But being that this bag does not have any zippers, it is really easy for me to turn, for me to sleep on my side, which I'm a side sleeper, right? It really keeps me comfortable and allows me to get a good night's sleep while I'm camping. So yes, these things are bigger, they are bulkier, they are a little bit heavier than those ultralight bags or the ultralight pads, but the comfort, in my opinion, is well worth paying that price on size and weight. And because I use that big bag, I can carry it with me with ease.